Spalding, it's Gresham Fourier. Good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning, guys. I'm doing well, man. Good to be with you. And, uh, well, let's start with uh, last time we talked, you were headed down to the uh, Hula Bowl in Orlando. Uh, I'm curious because, as you know now, Bill is out of the building. There's change in Foxborough. The draft has uh, never been more important in some ways here in New England. I'm just curious as to, you know, some of the talent you uh, maybe saw that sort of just stood out to your trained eye. Uh, they had, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, the hula bowl is at the senior bowl, right. but, um, I think there's probably six or eight players from the hula bowl that will be drafted. There's some linemen that look pretty promising, uh, a couple quarterbacks that might get drafted late, you know, and, uh, and I think there's some tight ends that looked, uh, looked promising that can double up as an F back, a full back, uh, H back. I mean, they look like because of the style of offenses that they ran. Uh, they look like they have uh, some multiple position value to them. So, I mean, there's no first round picks or anything like that there. But it was it was 250 scouts that were there. I saw the general manager of the Steelers. I mean, it was well represented. So, the kids got a good look. Yeah. So back to like the Patriots and uh, Gerard Mayo. Um, I'm wondering if, uh, uh, as for a first year head coach, what do you think like a couple of the most important hires would be for him? Like, what would he? What would well, be most important for him? It sounds like, you know, he's going to hire uh, – it doesn't sound like he's going to call plays, you know, from the defensive side. So he needs coordinators. You know, you need your your play caller. What's the offense going to be? What's the design? Is it something from the Shanahan tree or McVay tree? Or, you know, where where is it coming from? And what's the style of offense that you want? That's that's his imprint. Uh, what's the style of defense that, that he wants? And who's going to – uh, resurrect that and direct that, and then special teams wise, which they've always been pretty good. Um, what are they going to do? I mean, those are the three most important hires. And then I would say, strength and conditioning is always important. Um, you know, the guys got to develop physically, and so I think that's always a big part of any hire. Yeah. So the yeah, because the, the one thing I had mentioned, and and I'm, I thought you may have uh, you were going to say it because I feel like the, obviously the offensive coordinator that is those defensive coordinator that's obvious. Special teams, of course, they just have to feel the role. Uh, most people don't consider uh, the weight staff, the strength and conditioning staff important, but they, it obviously is one of the cornerstones of any organization. But what about like a, a brainiac type guy? What about like a, hey, listen, I won't let you make this mistake guy, like game management guy. I don't even know if they have a title for that, right? Because like, what, wouldn't like, I feel like the, the toughest thing for him that he can't prepare for is in-game situational management. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're like, I, I don't know how, um, you know, how up the food chain that is to hire somebody like that. But generally people hire some young kids that have that type of awareness and, you know, whether it's analytics or down distance, uh, what's the, what's the command chain for instant replay? I mean, all those kind of things. Um, generally uh, you fill those, those positions in. I would, I would, I don't want to neglect either the offensive line coach. It seems like since Dante, <laughs> Dante Scarnecchia, <laughs> Uh, left the first time they fell apart. Then when he left the second time, it seemed like they fell apart. So uh, find yourself a good offensive line coach that uh, can develop players and put a system in place where your quarterback is going to get protected. Brian Baldinger, Odyssey NFL Insider, here with Gresh and Fourier. Insider Calls brought to you by Old Spice Gentleman's Blend Body Wash, providing exfoliation plus 24-7 miniaturization because men have skin too. Uh, Baldy, as uh, as you look at sort of what has kind of gone on in the playoffs here, Dallas with a very disappointing one and done, Philadelphia just completely collapsed. Looks like Mike McCarthy's going to stay. Do you have an idea or a feel as to maybe what they should do in Philadelphia? And because guys like Bill Belichick and Mike Vrabel are out there, is it something that you know Philly should really? consider here given the way their roster is at this point well they uh they lost monday night and it's thursday morning and nothing has been said outside of some players you know basically uh coming to the rescue of nick sirianni uh, but it seems like a, an awful long time has gone on uh between that loss and how ugly it was and the collapse that we all witnessed over the last six weeks and thursday morning here so uh it seems like uh, maybe it's, you know, I mean, I'm sure like there, there's some back channels here where 
maybe they're talking to Belichick and they don't want Nick to know. I mean, I, I don't really know these things, but I don't know who would. I mean, it's a pretty airtight uh, facility at Novacare in Philadelphia. But, you know, you might want to kind of feel it out. I know there's a great deal of respect um, with Mr. Laurie and Bill Belichick. Uh, they have scrimmaged each other when Chip Kelly was the coach here. They always scrimmaged each other up there and, and down here in Philadelphia. Uh, they were always around Mr. Kraft and Mr. Laurie kind of mingling a little bit. There's always been a great deal of respect. So um, I would think that would – and, you know, there are certain players that have uh, kind of texted me said he thinks everybody's going to get blown out. But that hasn't happened, so I don't know. Hey, do you, are you surprised that Mike McCarthy's staying in Dallas? A little bit, a little bit. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I guess regular season wins is really important to uh, to Jerry Jones. I mean, it seems like, you know, that's uh, – because, you know, a lot of teams, a lot of guys, a lot of quarterbacks and coaches can win a lot of regular season games. They they go to kaput in the playoffs. And so uh, I played in Dallas. I know how quarterbacks get measured there. You either win championships or you're just – uh, and a big pile of guys on the other side that were good players and were the star and probably, uh, you know, were really good in the community and good guys after they get done playing, uh, like some of them that are on TV now. But, uh, you know, if you want to win championships, that's like a different medal, and you've got to prove that in the playoffs. And Dak hasn't done that, and the team hasn't done it. Yeah, Baldy, that's why I wonder um, if if the issue is the roster. You know, like uh, uh, Jason Garrett went as far as he could – then they make the move here, and you know Kellen Moore is out, and, and Mike McCarthy end up in theory getting more power because he's the guy now uh, calling the plays. And I don't know, like, is that roster as good as we think it is to where you just change the coach, or do we now start to look at certain parts of the roster and be like, okay, maybe that's where the change needs to happen now in Dallas? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, I thought Green Bay just executed at a high level. I mean, they threw some trap defenses out there. Dak threw it right into them. They set the cheese, and he took it. You know, next thing you know, Darnell Savage is, you know, going 59 yards for a touchdown or 64, whatever it was. Um, you know, that's that's coaching. That's uh, game planning uh, at the highest level. Uh, and then the quarterback was sensational on the other side. That's what you expect Dak to be, what Jordan Love was. I mean, throwing off his back foot and – putting the ball exactly where it has to be placed and uh, route combinations that are attacking the defense. Uh, and then, you know, the ability to run the ball the way Green Bay is running the ball in the, with the diversity of how they do it, with the tight end play, it looks different than what Dallas does. Um, is Matt LaFleur a better coach? I don't know, but they were much better prepared and had a much better game plan than the Cowboys did. And that comes down to coaching. So we're talking to Brian Baldinger, um, Odyssey NFL insider. Um, and, uh, Baldy, I'm, I'm curious, like, how well do you know Arthur Blank, owner of the Atlanta Falcons? Pretty well. Pretty well? I know Arthur's what, pretty good. Yeah, I've had, a, I've had some end-of-the-season conversations with, and mid-season conversations about his coaches in the past. Do, would, you, would you call him a pushover? No. No. Uh, no. Uh, no. You don't, want to be on the bar, you don't want to be on the wrong side of Arthur Blank. Yeah, so I'm curious, and I'm curious how, how that relationship. It seems like, and would you label the Atlanta Falcons team right now, as we sit, as a um, a talented team that is underachieving? Yes, I would label it that. I would say that. Now they have a they have quarterback issues for sure, and um, you know that's why they got bounced out of the playoffs. They they were in a position to to win the division, and then they collapsed down the stretch with what they had at that position. So, I mean, they have to upgrade that in, a, in the worst way, but the roster around that is pretty good. Um, is, can they win a Super Bowl? I don't know, but they, the, the roster is good enough to get – the talent's good enough there to, you know, to get to the playoffs for sure. Do you think they can win 16 games in two years? <laughs> yeah, I do think they can do that. Uh, well, Baldy, I wonder how much having a guy like Rich McKay in the building is sort of, you know, what gives Belichick maybe some ease in walking into that situation because when Arthur Blank announced, yeah, we're going to do it, and uh, yeah, you know, Terry Fontenot will be a part of the search, almost like threw that in there, like, yep, and when the new guy comes in, he'll just shove him right out the door. Like, I, I wonder how much a guy like Rich McKay in this situation might kind of be some sort of secret sauce in either connecting Bill and Arthur Blank or just having a, a vested veteran like that in the building in a guy like uh, McKay, if that kind of pushes it over the top for a guy like Belichick. 
Well, I would say Richard McKay was highly responsible for bringing in, you know, former Patriot personnel people like Dimitrov and Scott Pioli. And so there's certainly a pipeline there that exists that's real. Uh, now, you could argue the job that they did. They did get to a Super Bowl uh, with those guys there. So, you know, it's not like they haven't had success. But, you know, Rich McKay is a survivor. He's He's been there. I mean, I used to do the Falcon preseason games 20 years ago. And Rich McKay was, you know, he was a GM back then. And so he's 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 got a pretty pretty big role with that organization, and he carries some pretty big weight, you know, as an intermediary with him and and Mr. Blank. Interesting. Uh, we've got Kansas City going to Buffalo this weekend. Is this a big moment in the career of Patrick Mahomes in your mind, Brian Baldinger? First road playoff game, and it's in Buffalo, and there's no other way to say it. It's going to be cold as balls up there. Yeah, well, it's not going to be as cold as what Pat Mahomes was throwing through the other night, you know, against the Dolphins. So uh, he just proved that uh, there is no condition that's going to knock Patrick Mahomes off his game. He's the best player in the league. He's been the best player in the league. Whether he wins or loses, um, you know, he's he's going to be right back where he's at right now next year. It's just the second interview with, uh, with Arthur Blank, uh, you know, and Bill Belichick. Uh, and the whole, uh, uh, I want a uh, talented team that is underachieving. Well, that's them. Seven and nine. It's eight wins. It's like you're almost there. You're losing games that you shouldn't. In a winnable division. In too. a winner. Oh, my God. You, 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 you're you one game below 500, and you still win the division. So I'm wondering, like, what 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 is the deal now? Like, you're, I feel like now you're just getting down to brass tacks, right? You're just really getting down to length of contract, money, incentives, uh, power structure, Right, because mm-hmm. if Arthur Blank is not a pushover, because I said earlier, oh that, yeah, hey, listen, Bill needs a pushover. Bill needs somebody that he can push around and he can avoid and he can keep things from, just like he did with Kraft. Is Arthur Blank going to be like, no, 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 no? This is what because I feel like Arthur Blank needs to almost like spell it out. Uh, well, yeah, he has a general manager under employ right now, and Terry Fontenot is not going to walk in and be like, hey, boss, we should pick my guy, not this guy. So I think he's a dead man walking, and yeah, it feels like this is at the Belichick, Rich McKay, um, Arthur Blank level of Can things. You- hey, quickly, oh, I got something from Josina Anderson okay. here. Big old tweet that said... Uh, Barring a snag in negotiations or a future development, I'm expecting Bill Belichick to become the next head coach of the Atlanta Falcons. His previous rapport with Falcon CEO Rich McKay creates comfort he can't mimic in any other building with a current vacancy. Owner Arthur Blank is very skilled at being convincing and selling the benefits of coming to Atlanta, as I learned from Calais Campbell. Again, this is Josina Anderson. The GM dynamic in Atlanta is presumably more palatable for Bill in Flowery Branch than it would be in Philly. And as mentioned, both sides have been talking about this uh, for a while or through for a while. Thus, my previous reports, I expect Belichick to reunite with some members of his former staffs whenever he makes it official. Your thoughts on that? Oh, well, I mean, well, I mean, I, this is what we all expected. This is This is the team. And even before the whole, like, hey, talented but underachieving, that's the team. That's the division. That's the location. That's the owner. I think they have so many things in play. An owner that is uh, 82 years old, that is tired of losing. And I don't even want, I don't even care about the whole awkwardness that exists with the whole 28 to 3 debacle that was the Super Bowl. Like, nobody cares about that. The fans will probably be happy and they'll believe that it's never going to happen again. Mm -hmm. So, Bill. Right when he walks into the door, is a that's a seven-win team. My question always is how many wins above replacement than the other coach, which was Arthur Smith. So he won seven games. How many would you give him? Uh, two walk, two, I would say probably two right now until I know what the plan is at QB. I mean, you drop, say, Kirk Cousins in there because the owner feels pretty motivated to try to win. You might be talking about an 11 win team when it's all said. Yeah, I was going to say three to four. Yeah. Three to four. You're either a 10, 11 win team. And again, in that division, I don't see them getting much better. And I bet you he brings McDaniels, Uh, not Bill O'Brien. I believe that he brings McDaniels, Matt Patricia, Joe Judge. Judge. It is a plug and play. You just go, guys, go do it. You know, he he's got to do that. Mm-hmm. 
He doesn't have time to mentor and coach and, and protocol and this. Everyone just, they all get their office and they all go to work. That's it. I wouldn't be surprised if Pioli went, ends up going back there. Now